Good afternoon. Hope you're all well. Bit of an early start. Um, yeah, it's because um, my boys now they've just started having a little go with the. Yeah, what happened there? We started and we finished. Let's have a look. Bit of an early start. There, yeah, yeah. Right. So instead of connected, now all going well. We're on. Um, I think we are. Yeah. So let's get into it. Right. Oh, and with that false start, bit, there's somebody coming to the workshop here. Right, so what we're gonna do, just to introduce, we're gonna start off, we're basically, we're making, um, we're making a Robin uh, candle holder. So we're just prepping this, so you can see we've prepped it all, and now we'll start making this one here. There we are. Yeah. There we are. So we're on the live stream. About an hour. Alright. How can I help? I can give you a substitute there. Yeah. He and I were volunteers, I think, when we were stone man at the Sefferson School. You know, I think very cool. So we're just starting to cut out the base there. Hello, Sawyer Rob, and hello, John, as well. Um, so yeah, we're just starting to uh, get our base. We're cutting out two at the same time. Um, now, I demonstrate cutting these out on um, on the scroll saw, because that's what we sort of focus on. And for the purpose of the live stream at the moment, um, it's easier for me to demonstrate everything on one machine. Once we get more of a multi-camera setup, it's, it's not such a big issue. But um, when I'm making bases like this, um, and I demonstrate this on the videos, what I actually do quite often is to cut them on the bandsaw because it's quicker, and then on the belt sander, the attachment on the side, we sand them nice and smooth. So yeah, it, it's basically, um, that's the sort of process that we, we go through. But you know, you can cut them out on the, um, on the scroll saw, but what I would actually do is I would still go back over this, um, and I'd finish it off on the belt sander. The scroll saw, if you are a bit more, what's the word, patient with it, then you can get a good enough finish that you don't need to use the belt sander, but that's how I basically go about doing it. Right, well, now we're on to the second part. Just to show as well, that's gonna be the base. So we've got the base like so, and then um, we've got these little pieces that will be used to hold the candle in. And I've just realized I need four of these because I want to put a candle that side and I want to put a candle that side. So there we are. I need to cut out another two of these at some stage. So I'll demonstrate how we cut those out first. 
And then we'll go across and we'll demonstrate how we actually do the robin. Uh, I've also got a little um, piece of jewellery there, a bit of Celtic jewellery to uh, mark out. Hello there to the carver as well. Thank you all for joining us. Hope you're all well. It's been good seeing some of the carver's projects that you're working on at the moment. Great to see those spinning tops, some beautiful colours, lovely finish that you've got on them. Check that out on uh, on Instagram if uh, if nobody's seen those or on, on uh, the carver's Facebook. Um, but yeah, always great to know what everybody's up to. Any questions as we're going along, remember to get those into us. And also any... Um, uh, any thoughts, any any things you know that, that you want to know about about the process that we use? Give us a shout. Uh, also, the the other thing I was going to say is, yeah, any projects that you're working on yourself at the moment, let us know. It's always great to know what everyone's up to. <laughs> hope don't happen <laughs> right basically um, that's the thing when you're doing jobs like this you're trying to keep it attached to the solid as long as possible unfortunately it's come apart so instead of trying to um, instead of trying to get that now to work uh, it's gonna be safer and easier basically good example for everyone to see because it, it is so delicate now because it's such a small piece of wood God, to control that that starts to become a challenge. It highlights, with the project that I'm coming on to next, it highlights why um, what we do, we mark out on a larger piece of wood. Because once you're at this sort of size, trying to control that on the on the scroll saw, it's, it's that pressure that you need to keep down on it. Um, it's difficult to achieve that. So if I've got a pen or a pencil somewhere, oh, the carver was saying, I was at an autumn festival over the weekend. Brilliant, rained the whole time, but I managed a few sales and got a commission to carve a bit. Fantastic. Oh, that sounds like a, a worthwhile weekend. Uh, let's have a little look. Right, so I'm just looking for a pencil. Because um, this is the thing, these things happen. 
Um, let's have a little look. Yeah, there we are. Just to show, just to show everyone. See, doesn't always go to plan. Uh, but all you do, the one that we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have managed to cut out successfully. We mark that out. Uh, I've got to make a few of these because, as I said, I've forgotten to make enough anyway. Um, so what we do, and part of it, part of what's happened there, um, yeah, is concentration, making sure that you um, cut it out in the right order where you leave it attached to the solid for as long as possible. So I very quickly cut out two more of these. The woods as well that we're using, we're using that, what you refer to in America as fragrant cedar or eastern cedar, and we're also using Iroko. Um, so a West African timber. But yeah, we'll have a little go. Um, let's see if this time it proves successful. Hello, Chris. Hope all is well. Hope the scroll saw's doing the job for you as well. Um, yeah, we're uh, working on a little Christmas, uh, a candle holder at the moment. So uh, yeah, we'll carry on putting. Instead of trying to fuss around with cutting those two little ones that had gone wrong out, cut another two, we've replaced it, saves us time, and we've got to cut another two, we've got to cut another four altogether anyway. Right, now, uh, moving on to the main part of this particular design, and you'll notice the first thing that I've done, I've removed this little plate. If you can do that on your machine, when you're doing the pierce work, it does help us out, it manages to clear away the uh, waste for you. So um, that's the first little thing that we're going to do. Uh, we drilled our pierce work holes so you can feed that blade in like so. Oh yeah, always looking to give little pointers, little ideas, little things that work for us. Um, uh, just, just small things that might make a difference. Last week I was cutting out a piece of oak with this wood here, one of our favorites to work in, teak. Now I was working with a worn blade and I thought I'm gonna have to change this blade. And then I cut the whole thing out because the reason I thought I was gonna have to change the blade is because it was a worn blade and normally what happens when you're cutting out with a worn blade, um, it burns. And I cut the whole thing out and there wasn't a burn mark. And I'm thinking, hmm, that's interesting. Now I'm gonna carry on cutting, I'm gonna leave it to all why was it? Can you think of a reason why I've cut out, I was stack cutting with oak and teak? Why didn't I get any burn marks? Let's see, put it in the comment section. Anybody know what's the reason why we didn't get any burn marks? And I'll do some pierce work, I'll check the comments and uh, we'll see if anyone gets it before I explain what. Carver's top of the class there. You're spot on. Yeah. 
the teak, because it's full of teak oil, um, it produces that natural oil and it lubricates the blade. Uh, this is something I've heard people actually do where they actually oil the blade. I tried it and it didn't work too successfully. But yeah, because you're cutting teak, which is a really oily wood full, full of teak oil, um, what happened is, is that it lubricates that blade and it it stops it from, from actually burning. So yeah, useful little tip there. If you're cutting out something quite dense, um, you know, like a maple, like an oak, something like that. If you stack cut it with teak, the teak lubricates the blade. And we tested this out where we were cutting out Christmas decorations with oak and we only put a very thin piece of teak in the middle and it worked again, no burning whatsoever. So yeah, useful little tip. Um, use a bit of teak, something oily, bit of iroco, and it lubricates the blades. It's cotton. Okay, so then we just got a block of wood just getting a bit stuck. So we use an old scroll saw blade just to try and free it. There it goes. Just just as well, just to clear it out the way, because it if you leave it in place, it can make a little bit of a mess for you. So it's just as well, get it out the way, and then you can start cutting once again. Let's have a little look. Um, what do you call the bears? Um, you can also use clear packing tape for friction vaporizes. All the best. Cheers. Um, the friction vaporizes the tape and it acts as a lubricant. There we are. Yeah. A um, few different techniques then for lubricating the blade. Um, and it makes a difference then. You know, that that's one as well that I've, I've heard mentioned a couple of times. Yeah, people using packing tape, any little methods like that um, just makes life a little bit easier for you cutting out. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and thanks for, uh, thank you uh, Stephanie for, for sharing that one. A, a, another useful little idea worth, um, worth trying out.
just as I started cutting it, I always sand the back of my wood nice and flat and I just noticed it just rocking about a bit. So there's obviously just a little tiny um, shaving or something, just got under it, so yeah, causing it to rock around. Uh, you can use glad press and seal, it works good too, fantastic. Uh, carving the bear out of walnuts, lovely timber to work in. Um, yeah, you can do some lovely stuff in walnut. So you can use glad press and seal, it works as well. I'll have to, I'll have to look up what that one is. But yeah, all little techniques, um, you know, and all useful ideas, hopefully, for, for anyone who's, um, who, who's sort of looking to reduce that burning, you know, because we're working a lot in dense uh, hardwood, so you do get a bit of burning once that blade gets a bit more worn. So anyway, we can try and reduce it. Always going to be useful. Okay, so that concludes the actual pierce work. Now all we're gonna do is to cut the surround. And again, um, you know, depending on the surround that I've actually got, a lot of the time I would be doing that using the, um, the band saw and then the belt saw as opposed to the scroll saw. But for the purposes of the demonstration, we will demonstrate cutting it out on the scroll saw.
Right, so that's the majority of the work done on this particular piece. Uh, so we got two candle, there we are. So we're gonna have that one will be the base for that one there. What is that? Oh, that's the dot of super glue where I stuck it together, that's what it was. I thought for a terrible moment there was a piece of dowel or something in it. So yeah, that'll be our one candle holder, just like so. And we've also then got the, the little candle, we'll, we've got those prepared. That'll be for the one side, we'll also have another one for the other side. So that's the one piece ready there. And then the other piece, we got that one there. Why is he a bit wibbly wobbly? I would say that's because I need to change the blade and it's not cutting straight. So that's another little job needs doing. And we got that piece and that piece there. So we're well on with those two projects. Yeah, just look at this one. That one's cut straight, is it? Yeah, that one's cut fine. But this one's cutting an angle. So good sign that the blade needs changing. Good timing because we'll change it before we go on to our next project. Have we missed any other ones next? No. We're all good for the uh, comments. So what we're gonna do when we go on to this one, the first thing, I'm gonna change that blade. So we want that blade to be cut in nice and straight. Let's have a little look. Yeah, that's got quite a bit of a curve on it now. So it's sort of going off at an angle and it's starting to get to the stage where it's gonna start burning. So just as well, change it over for a nice new sharp blade and away we go again getting it cutting fine okay this one here that we're doing little piece of jewelry really popular piece of jewelry uh, the most popular video that we've ever actually done we did a youtube short um, and it actually had over i think to date it's got over six hundred and sixty eight thousand views on it um yeah, simple little piece of Celtic jewellery. Um, we refer to it as a Celtic heart. Someone reckoned it looked like a, a, a Celtic pretzel. Uh, no, an Irish pretzel. Um, to which my reply was, sounds tasty. Um, but yeah, this is, again, a simple little project. You can see what we were demonstrating earlier where we cut out on a larger piece of wood so you've got more wood to hold on to. When you're, you're sort of working very close to that blade, it's so difficult to control uh, what you're actually cutting out. But what we do then, we'll start working our way through the pierce work and preparing this ready for the hand carving. I've got a block of wood in the middle of my mask, so that's gonna be distracting, so we move that one out of the way.
sort of working and we're cutting out and we're sort of thinking, you know, a stage or two stages ahead. So this one, when I've drawn it out originally, I have drawn it out quite delicately. And so I'm just thinking ahead to, to work to the outsides of the line to give us a little bit more strength, a bit more substance to, to what we're making. I'm also aware these two fine ones that we start with, the reason I start with those is they're very much the most delicate little holes that we're doing. Um, on the bottom layer, there's a good chance I'm going to have to go back over those just to sharpen them up on the uh, on the finish cuts. Thomas Woodcarver's just coming through. Yes. Uh, what's that one now? Oh. Uh, mm, Irish pretzels, indeed, and Guinness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, it, it, I, I, they could have called it Celtic pretzels because that would have been more accurate. Because um, we. Of course, we've got, we got, we got the Celts here in Wales, we've got them in Scotland as well too, and all over Northern Spain, Portugal. Hello, Sammy. Where are you going? You're there, North. there we are. Right. You're north. We've got two boys all dressed up in their football and rugby kit, ready to go. Don't spend it all at once. There we are. Right, now what we're going to do, we're going to carry on doing the pierce work and cutting out our... Celtic press pretzels. Right, here we go. Higher.
Okay, so we just check it all on the back just to see how it's coming up. That bottom layer is going to require a little bit of attention, but all in all, that's looking okay. We got all of that pierce work finished off. And now, the last little part to the process is to cut our surround. Same method as always. We're trying to... Um, we got there. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. I don't know if we lost everybody for a minute there, but uh, something might have happened. Yeah, um, so the last part of the process is to... Uh, ah, I know what it is. Sorry, I've lost you. It was when Nico came and said hello. That's what it was. I'm with you. Uh, I know what's happened there. Right, so the last part of the process that we're going to demonstrate, we're just going to cut that surround. And this is the thing, that's the sort of speed, I've gone through all of the pierce work like that for you to see all in one go, to show you that's the speed that I'm sort of normally working at. And we're going to have three layers cut out at the same time, ready for us to carve. I know now when it comes to the carving, the top two layers are going to be quite good. This one on the bottom layer, that's not going to come out great because it's a cheap piece of mahogany. It's what we refer to as the furry mahogany. It's going to be difficult for us to get a really sharp, sharp finish on it. But we'll see how it comes out. Should scroll so fine, but the carving is going to be a bit of a challenge because it's a little bit on the soft end of the scale. like so we cut ourselves out three little Irish pretzels or what we call Celtic eternity well Celtic in we call it eternal heart because it's got the eternity sign and the heart in it as well what I will do from here then I will carve this layer first because I got all the markings and then I got this one then that I can use to copy and then this one we got a little bit of tidying up work to do um, on some of the pierce work, that's not unusual for the bottom of the three layers. And we'll have a go at carving it and see how it comes up. So there we go. Simple little demonstration again. Hopefully that gives you some ideas for different projects that you can have a go at making. We got that Christmas themed one with the robin. So we've managed to cut out two of those. And then we got our three little Celtic eternity sign hearts 
Thanks again for joining us. Hopefully that has been interesting and hopefully it's been useful. Uh, any questions, any thoughts, get them in the comments section. Um, and yeah, anything that you want to know, if you're new to scroll soaring as well, don't forget there's all sorts of different videos. And um, if you're new to wood carving, there's all sorts of different videos that we have uh, on our channel to help you uh, get started and um, different ideas to point you in the right direction. Hope you all have a great week. I'm all I'm off now to uh, have a look at these boys playing uh, football, see how they get on. And um, as always, we appreciate your support. Thanks again. <laughs>